Welcome to the Gen Z Journey, where we work with you through an entrepreneurial lens to build a wholesome perspective on life and build both our business and personal dreams together. Join our community on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Gen Z Journey. So hello and welcome to another Gen Z Journey podcast. And today we've not necessarily got a guest on, but we've got a new member of the Gen Z team, which we're super excited to I introduce you to and uh, I'll get him to kind of introduce himself with a, with a small introduction in a minute um, but kind of I just wanted to, to make people aware of the significance of this um, for us as a team you know we're we're letting people know about what we're doing me and Aaron um, as we go out uh, as we as we go about our daily lives and people are suggesting people to us to, to get in contact with and and etc but it's really exciting when we can bring a new member on because what that signifies for us is that they really identify with what we're trying to do um, as an organization, as a channel, um, as, an, as an audience for you guys as well. So it's, it's really significant when, when we bring someone on because we have a real synergy and they're really excited to work with them. Um, and, and not only is this exciting for us, but it's also exciting for you guys because it means we can produce more meaningful content um, and provide more value, hopefully. Um, which you'll see kind of within the next coming weeks and months. But without further ado, um, Peter, please go ahead and just give yourself a, a small introduction before we move into kind of the main body of this um, introduction podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Peter. Uh, I've been brought on to this team, this wonderful team. I, I'm really excited to, you know, give out what I have to offer and also, you know, just to become part of this team. I, you know, I've always been a part of this like entrepreneurship world. I've always been doing, you know, um, odd jobs and, you know, freelancing and stuff like that. I always had that drive in me. So when I met with these two fine gentlemen, I, I just had this drive, uh, this synergy that I, that I experienced with them and it was just fantastic. So I'm really happy to be on board. I'm really happy to, you know, share my experiences and also listen to you guys you know do your thing so yeah that's that's about that's a quick intro <laughs> awesome and Aaron I want to ask what was your first impressions oh I should probably explain first actually so I met Peter originally um through everyone will, will know who Joe is um on the podcast so I met Peter originally through Joe um and then I was like I gotta I gotta introduce him to Aaron and kind of have a conversation so Aaron what was your first impressions of Peter when you met yeah, so my first impression was actually not him, but his music. Uh, I I had uh, been talking to Joe and Rio about uh, Peter, and he was suggested as someone that could help us with creating some music content for the beginning of the podcast, actually. Uh, and we, we were really just uh, excited to have someone that could possibly help us with that. And so then Rio came along and actually worked with him. And the first thing he introduced me to was the music after they had worked on it for about four or five hours, maybe even longer. Uh, <laughs> and I listened to the music and I was just blown away by how, how fantastic the music was. Uh, being created from scratch and me having no skills with uh, audio. It was just such a fascinating thing to hear uh, someone create music from nothing. And so I was already mesmerized by his skill and his ability. Uh, and shortly after we had a meeting with him, got to talk one on one with him. I uh, really got to know him, got to know his background. And it was just that uh, he's a great person. It sounds like it's someone that's motivated to me, someone that really wants to uh, bring along a message that we're, we're trying to give out. You know, we really want to talk about that entrepreneurial mindset, really want to talk about personal growth. And just, I feel like Peter very well embraces all of those things. Absolutely. Yeah. I 100% agree with you there on Aaron. And that was kind of originally why I said, I've got, I've got to introduce Aaron to him because yeah, we did the work on the introduction for the podcast, which you can hear at the start of this episode um but uh we, we did that work together and, and kind of obviously with time we were chatting having conversation and yeah just really found that synergy with um peter and uh which is also why i would say we were able to produce a, a good such a good intro um for this podcast as well because i don't necessarily have the production capabilities i can i can convey what i i want um to to kind of produce in a song 
but Peter's just got that ability to take it to the next level and be like, oh yeah, I know what you mean. I'm good. I'll do this. And then it's like, that's exactly what I wanted. So Peter has, Peter has definitely got skills in those areas, but not only is he a music producer, but he's also a bit of a videographer. Um, and uh, without giving too much away, this is, this is a big step for the Gen Z. Everyone will know that we're already um, on YouTube with the Zoom podcast. You can find this podcast on YouTube as well. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna start playing with YouTube and doing some more uh, interesting content over there as well, uh, just to provide a a different um, kind of experience. And, and that's something I wanted to reiterate just in this podcast as well is that you know with with each platform we try and give you guys something slightly different, but still conveying the same message. You know, with the articles that we write, we're very um, informative, give you a lot of information on the ways in which you can see succeed. With the podcast, we bring on guests and we discuss um, the, the articles as well, but we bring on the guests and, and help you learn through experiences of people about these topics. And then finally, with the YouTube, you know, we want to we wanna show that in action, show some of that uh, stuff that we talk about, about finance, about mindset, about networking, about anything. We want to kind of show you more of that in action and, and have a little bit of fun with it as well, because that's a big thing here is like we love to have fun. We love to just enjoy the experience. So um yeah, just wanted to just wanted to reiterate that on this podcast. But let's get into the main body of this, Peter. Let's, I'm going to start the first question off uh, with you, and, and that is, what is your definition of kind of entrepreneurship? Yeah, so entrepreneurship is, you know, it, it's interweaved in my family pretty heavily. Um, for me, entrepreneurship is the full embodiment and the full expression of what you want to do and what you want to be in life. Um, entrepreneurship is basically an ability for you to just say, you know, you have your goals in life and you have your goals in how to succeed and you allow yourself to open yourself up to that world. And what I mean by that is, you know, you can work that nine to five or any kind of job that, you know, you work in this hierarchy where, you know, you're, you're a worker in, in a multi-million dollar company and, you know, you, it's, it's a perfectly fine place to be in. And I, I actually don't mind it at all. But with entrepreneurship, you put a lot more responsibility on yourself and you learn how to manage your own money. You learn how to manage your own lifestyle, everything. Like every aspect of your life becomes becomes your own control and you can shape it into whatever you want. With working for a different company, which is fantastic and safe, and you have a safety net of saying, okay, if something doesn't go right, you know, I'm still, I still have a job, everything's gonna be great, you know, I'm not making the huge calls, and I know that I'll be safe. But with entrepreneurship, it's much more personal. You, you get to decide and lead a team, or you decide to lead yourself into where you want to go and you can actually follow your passions you can follow everything that you want to do and you can grow immensely not saying that you can't with uh any other kind of job but with entrepreneurship um the the growth is just exponential uh, and that's that's just the truth of it in, in my opinion that that's what i live by my parents live by it and their parents have too so yeah definitely agree with that and interesting interesting you say kind of how it impacts all parts of your of your life you know you, you'll know that's a big part of our of our gen z definitions that it is it's a lifestyle um and it, it requires a lot of sacrifice a lot of effort but there's a big bigger payout and i was just going to get you peter to speak actually on that lifestyle is how over the past couple of days have you been changing your lifestyle as you've been getting kind of more into your entrepreneur so well, not more into but you, as you as you've continued on your entrepreneurship journey yeah i mean you know everyone everyone has their own journey let's just say that and um my my biggest issue i'm not gonna lie i'm I, i'm i'm a night owl a lot of people know uh, if if people get to know me i'm not a, i'm not a person who goes to sleep early and what i've been noticing was you know i would start going to sleep later and later and later and eventually what happened was I was losing that, um, it was almost a focus issue. And it, it, 
it, it was a lot of issues that came across of me not getting enough sleep and that was one of my one of my biggest issues you know I, I was starting to get all these these new opportunities with you guys especially Joe started hitting me up m- much too often but I loved I love him Joe if you're listening to this just understand I love it but you know I was getting so much more energy from all sorts of you know from everywhere so you know i i started getting burned out i started sleeping less and then i realized okay this, this has to change immediately called joe i was like what and he he wakes up at four in the morning four, yeah. he, he's he's incredible he's incredible but yeah i i was like how do you do it you know we we, we get into phone calls and he i i asked him what's the secret and uh, uh, i mean th- there's a lot that goes into it but essentially what he told me was you have to see yourself you know uh, he gave me a an opportunity to visualize something saying if you had one desire right now anything that's so desirable what would you do and i said man i would love to go go travel and he said where would you want to go and i was like okay um let's say paris in france and he said, okay, so imagine waking up at 4 a.m. to catch that flight. Would you go? Of course I would. You know, that's that's such a, that, that's a huge thing that I want to do. I would love to travel, even though, you know, the, the world's going crazy right now, right? The COVID's happening and it's not possible. But if I had the ability to, to fly right now, to get there safely and have a good time, that would be awesome. Now... I need so once he told me that he was like you have to find that drive in everything that you do there has to be a purpose to what you're doing so once he told me that that was that was pretty big he also sent me some videos too about you know just the mindset of all that but that was a big <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding I've been going to sleep at around four or five o'clock in the morning that's when Joe was waking up I was going to sleep and now I mean, I I completely reversed it in a in a span of a week. I'm I'm waking up at what eight o'clock now with you guys, no problem. So I'm back I'm back on the drive. I I have that, you know, I have that ambition to do something again, especially when I'm part of this this group. So would you say that it was a little bit of a wake up call? <laughs> oh man! Uh, uh, but. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Anyhow, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> on a more serious note, I I completely agree with you, and what what Joe gave you is very sound advice. I do believe that you know the only way that you're gonna wake up at a at a good time every morning is if one you have a responsibility you can't avoid because it's like putting food on the table. So someone having to go to a job every day, you know, they'll continue to wake up at that time because it's required of them to be able to eat. Um, but I think the only other thing that uh, wakes people up in the morning is something they're passionate about and something they really want. So that idea, um, I, I instilled in myself recently. I was having the same <laughs> issues, uh, especially with college and me finishing my last quarter. I didn't really have much motivation to uh, do anything. I wasn't sure where I was going with my career, and it made it kind of difficult for me to uh, want to wake up and want to do things because I just felt unmotivated and so I did the same thing. I started thinking about things that I was motivated for, started creating a business plan. Um, I'm going to be launching a business soon and you know that idea of being able to wake up every morning and have something to do whether it's uh, the Gen Z journey or whether it's working on that business plan and continuing to develop that idea is, is really important and something that should be ingrained into everyone is that, that concept of just that, you know, what is my passion and what do I want and how am I going to achieve it? Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely connect with you on that. I mean, that, that sleep thing, I think a lot of people from our generation will struggle with, you know, we're naturally um, at this age kind of want to be up later and waking up later. Um, and yeah, I had a couple, a couple of nights ago, I was, I was up at kind of one thirty, and it got around to two o'clock and, suddenly just all these creative juices were just flowing i was like working on some podcast stuff. i was like wow this would be really cool and i ended up staying to like 3 a.m and and then i woke up the next day and i felt awful um and and it is and, and i started to review that i was like why why am i starting to get into a routine where i i want to go to sleep later what is it what's the motivation 
and it was just it was just negative it was negativity you know i was getting up i was working i'm doing two summer classes at my college and i've just got a summer job as well um and i'm doing the, the summer job training which is, is pretty dry and pretty boring um and and i'm obviously then working on the on my college work as well um and i it was just because i was because i was waking up to that and in my head i was i was not enjoying that at that time uh, that it's like oh well staying up till 3am doesn't matter because you're not looking forward to what you're getting up to anyway um and and it really shocked me that you know that was just my subconscious reaction to 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 that and i was like so what can i do to to kind of realign that and it was if i just do a little bit of work on the podcast each morning whatever that is you know whether that is or work on the gen z whether it be doing social media or whether it be having a meeting or whether we're doing a recording like we're doing now you know we doing a little bit of something you enjoy every morning i think is a great therapy just to get your day started right you know um so that's what i found on on my journey of sleep we've we've all, all been on a on a wake up call this this week <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. And so, uh, Peter, let's dig more into your background. Um, let's g give us a little kind of little, little short biography of, of Peter Jurek. Sure. Um, I was born here in California, the Bay Area. Lived here my whole life. I lived in Pleasanton my whole life. Um, had an incredible experience with, you know, um, just the i had i had a great amount of um how could i say it i had opportunities given to me that, that were like no other especially when i met joe and everyone like that um what i would say is you know i i've always been into the arts you know i've always been you know i was five years old banging on pans and pots and stuff like that uh always loved music uh, started off playing the guitar. There's one right there. Ding, ding. Um, yeah, I always loved playing music and stuff like that. And I was definitely a person who, you know, started drawing and stuff like that. But especially when it came into, you know, electronic music, I would say my nephews are to blame for that because they, they, they actually pushed me into that realm. They showed me the way of, you know, Dead Mouse and all these kinds of cool artists. And um, it was pretty wide, wide eye opening because, you know, I, I used to just listen to classical rock and stuff because that's what I usually started off when I was having my guitar lessons and introductions and stuff like that. Um, and then when I found out, oh, you can actually make, you know, music on a computer, that, that kind of that kind of made me interested. So, uh yeah, I started getting into that and especially because I was I'm I'm more of a nerdy kind of person. Uh I started dabbling a lot more with that kind of stuff because you know, working on a computer is great, but you know, tying those two elements together, having a computer and music somehow combined, that was one of the coolest realizations and it started off with just, you know, messing around with mixing music, you know, DJing and stuff like that. There there's a program called Virtual DJ and i think everyone in the music scene knows that it's kind of a meme right now it's you know if you don't if if you're starting off and you know you're not experienced you can just start off with virtual dj and just have fun um and you know the connotation with people you know being beginners it's like oh it's not that good but it's a pretty powerful program and i started off with that and then the next time i saw my my nephews they were like hey we got this thing on our computers. It's it's called a uh, it's called uh, it's called a DAW, a DAW digital audio workstation, and you know I it was it was Fruity Loops. It's one of the biggest you know music production software available, and you know I opened it up and I was like, oh, this is cool. I have no idea how to work with it. So after you know trying it out, I I took like a they had a free version up back then I don't even remember what it was called I think it was free loops some version I can't even remember worked on that absolutely hated it uh, the, the learning curve was astronomical like it it did not make sense I, I just really didn't it, it the workflow was just completely 
you know, alien to me. So I gave up. And then after a while, I started getting back into it. I was like, man, I, I want to make music. I don't want to just take other people's music and just put it together. That That's fun too, but... So I started looking into Ableton. And out of nowhere, I, you know, I, I took the free trial that they had online for Ableton 9. I downloaded it, worked tirelessly, and for some reason it just clicked. It just made way more sense. And since then I've just been using that you know the I got myself a copy and there's no comparison there really isn't a comparison um yeah I I think they're they're all they're they all have their strengths but for me this worked out well and I have been doing it for seven to eight years now I think it's eight years eight years of messing around on a computer making little waves so yeah well uh i don't know from from what i've heard to it's more than just little waves and definitely yeah we'll, we'll have all of the uh all of all of peter's music down in the description so you guys can go and find him on on spotify on apple music on anywhere that he is definitely because uh yeah we want to we're supporting each other's journey you know that's a big part of, of this of gen z journey as well we're all on one and we want to support each other so that's a that's a huge part of of peter's journey so um yeah we'll definitely definitely leave all of those links um down below but my next question, Peter, was, as, as you mentioned it, actually, when I asked about the definition of entrepreneurship and the fact that your family has been, it's very intertwined with your family and stuff. So could, you, could you just expand a little bit on your family's background um, and how entrepreneurship is, is so intertwined with them? Yeah. So my, my parents actually came from former Yugoslavia. Um, there was a huge war over there in the 1990s. And uh, they basically fled. My father actually went to Germany to evade the war. Uh, he started his own business over there while my mother tried to get a visa to go to them and to go to America. She was, she got ridiculously lucky getting over here. I think she was on the last flight getting out <laughs> and she got her, uh, all of her visas stamped and everything the, the day of and she was on on the plane to America. But um yeah, my dad, he actually worked in Germany for quite a while. I can't remember exactly for how long, but what he worked on was, you know, machining and piping and, you know, he he was he was almost like a general contractor but for uh industrialized buildings. And he worked on machinery and stuff like that. And you know, after a while, he he got he got tons and tons of work experience over there. You know, he actually mastered the trade. And what happened was, you know, uh, back then it, it was a little bit different. Apparently, from from my understanding, when I heard his stories, um, what happened was to be able to own a business in Germany back then, you were supposed to be partnered with a citizen in Germany. You weren't able to have your own company solely by yourself, a sole proprietary. Uh, propri Let's not go into big words, but <laughs> basically, you're, you're not able to, you know, own your own company by yourself if you're not a citizen. So my father was not the biggest fan of that, so he started working on his visa to get into America. And after I think about a year or two, he was able to get it uh, because of you know the ongoing war and stuff. He you know found some way or privilege to be able to get there and ever since uh he's been working as a um a general contractor that he himself worked as an independent contractor uh working with caltrans so when caltrans in the bay area would have an issue with one of their homes they would actually call him and then he would actually set the prices and then he would be the one fixing the homes and everything and keeping them up to date uh, he's been doing that for over 30 years. He's now retired. He's living the dream. Um, and as for my mother, you know, she came from also from, from, uh, Yugoslavia, but both Croatian and she started off with a background in chemistry. So food, food cooking and stuff like that. And she was unable to find a job after you know the war broke out so what she did was she left also 
And she, when she got here, uh, she met my father, they got married, and my mother decided to uh, go in the world of, what's it called? Um, she was a daycare provider. And what she wanted to do was own it herself, which what she did was exactly that. She started her own without a lick of English. She didn't know any English and she was able to find herself working with clients and basically having two or three, I think the maximum was five children under her household, including me. So I was always surrounded with toddlers my age and then until, you know, I was basically 18 and my mom was taking care of, you know, toddlers at the same time. And, you know, our house is always busy, but my mom has always been working on, you know, her business. Um, and I was able to help her out too, whenever she, you know, the, the day and age when the internet started to take over, um, I was the one building her the website. I was the one making, you know, automated calls for her, you know, everything that would make, you know, a client more susceptible to reach out and actually get the service from her and to get a, you know, a contract going. So that's that that's their story uh there, there's much more to it but um the main the main thing that i took away from that is you know when when i see my parents um that really you know they tried they they put all of their their energy into you know making their own um their own dreams and success, successes come true there's no telling what i can do or what anyone else can do it's 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 really you know, you get a vision that you like, that you want, and you have to strive for that. If you if you strive for it and, you know, you actually put in the effort, there's, I'm not going to say that it's going to happen for sure, but the possibility of it happening is better than, you know, not doing it at all. And that was, that was the biggest, biggest thing that I took away from it. And I, I try to, you know, move with that legacy i i try to you know follow in their footsteps and try to do my own thing absolutely that's a very powerful story definitely aaron do you want to yeah. you want to say anything on that uh, not too much but that that's awesome i mean sounds like entrepreneurship really runs in the blood which is amazing uh and i completely agree with your statement that you know you just got to pursue your passion then I do sort of disagree actually with the fact that you said it might not happen because I genuinely believe that everyone's passion and their desire for what they want will happen eventually. You know, they might fail 99 times, but the hundredth time they might get it. And as long as you don't give up, you have to eventually beat the odds. <clears throat> yeah. I should have rephrased that as saying, um, you know, sometimes, uh, for example, I, I work on applications too. Um, I, I'm starting, I'm, binded with another person with my uh, a co-founder for a, an application that we're building and you know it might work and it might not so w what happens is uh we get to a point where we'll see if it's feasible i've i've had this happen before and the idea is there and i'm very passionate about it but you know maybe it crumbles apart or maybe there's like a division between you know the work um the people that are involved and if that happens, you know, so be it. But that, that drive for you to keep pursuing what you want, whether it be one project or another, it's always like, OK, if this project goes down, then, you know, you have something else that you can clench onto, And you're like, this is the one that I want to do, you know, so. Um, and, and on that as well is like, uh, you know, finding um, finding something you're really pursuing goes beyond, you know, that one project. So. The fact you know building an application is like your your goal is is not necessarily like you're passionate about doing that specific project but your motivation in life goes beyond that you want to maybe it's I, I don't know maybe you want to help people or maybe whatever that that goal is and you know all of these projects along the way are are just ways in which you can reach that that ultimate goal um so thinking about it rather like in in, in terms of bigger picture rather than project by project is always a a huge part of it as well um and and like that's not to say as well that um you have to you have to know exactly what your your big life goal is as well because with each project that comes and goes whether it works out or not that goal changes slightly you know that that's a very good point 
So I agree. I agree with both of you in terms of Aaron very much. I believe that you know if you if you have a goal, if you have some sort of direction, you'll eventually reach it if you just keep pursuing it. And then I agree with Peter as well is that projects can fail and can work, but whatever happens, you're still on that journey towards wherever you're going. You know. Yeah, and it's not even not even a project. You can imagine like the project can evolve. You know, there's yes. there's a big thing that's called pivoting. You know, you you start off with an idea, and then you realize, oh, the market base is totally different. You know, the the people that are clinging on to this application or this business are a little bit different. So then you have to modify your business plan to actually work out. And that's not to say like you know the whole thing's ruined and then you have to start from scratch, but. You know, you the the whole process of being an entrepreneur and figuring these little things out, and then actually, you know, tuning your your business plan and tuning your business in general to fit the market's needs, that's a huge that that that's huge, and uh, I think everyone has the ability to learn that if if they want it, and it's it's huge. It's it's the thing that you know, for example, Tesla. I believe Elon Musk almost went bankrupt multiple times. And, you know, it's that drive, that continuous drive. He's like, I'm going to get this, whether you like it or not. And then... They've still not been profitable either. Each year they're, they're running at a loss. So they've still not been profitable. He's still not there yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> that guy's interesting. Well, actually, a good example to uh, kind of go with what Peter is saying is the Gen Z journey. You know, my idea of the Gen Z journey started as a, an article publishing website, and I quickly figured out after doing some research that it wasn't going to be the most successful because 70% of our generation preferred uh, things that were video related or audio related, not uh, reading. And so that became a, a big barrier for me, especially because I didn't know um, much about video or audio editing at all and by you know sheer sheer luck I found Rio but the the idea of me being able to pivot my plan and my idea from just being an article publishing thing to partnering up with Rio and being able to have the audio side of it in a podcast and now bringing Peter onto the the team and being able to create videos soon um, you know we're we're adapting to our audience and that's that's a big part of uh, being an entrepreneur is being able to adapt to it because you know you have your ultimate goal we have our ultimate goal um, that we can all agree on and it's uh, you know we're trying to help people with financial literacy you know personal development entrepreneurial lifestyle we're trying to help people with that but the way in which we help them is going to change and the way in which we provide the resources that will help them is always going to be evolving and changing based on our on our experiences and the the audience experience and you know what what is required for us to continue helping absolutely absolutely right Aaron. definitely agree with that and so my next question for you peter is what have been some i'm sure your parents are but what or what slash who has been some key experiences uh, on your journey um to date oh man the the biggest thing that i've i've noticed i have a couple of of examples but you know the most important thing that i've i've learned during my journey of entrepreneurship is especially when i when i met people that were aligned with my vision and i, I don't take that lightly i i honestly believe that when you start to encapsulate yourself with all these people that have the same direction as you, they want to make something that's really big. You start to actually get more motivated, and it's not—it's not a degrading, um, you know, competition where you have to be better than someone else. But it's more of a a community that actually, you know, if it, if it helps you gain more energy, to gain more, to gain more experience in general. So when I met uh, when I met my business partner, I I was really thrilled because you know he's he's clever he's smart he he's such he has the work ethic that is way beyond me I'm not even kidding he's he's really smart and he's on top of it and when I saw that I was like I really want to do that too 
you know, I see that and I'm like, I, I want to, I want that kind of energy. I want to be able to do the things that he's doing. So that was one of the biggest things that I've learned, uh, during, during my, my whole experience with, you know, starting, you know, a small venture or something like that. When it comes to music, uh, the same thing applies. I would meet up with, you know, I would go to venues and stuff and I would talk to people and network and stuff like that. And, you know, I would find out someone in the group makes music and then immediately you're like, hey, like, it would be cool to make music with you. Uh, I would want to, you know, hear what they have to offer and then maybe we can collaborate on some project together. And that opens so many doors. The friendliness that, you know, the music uh, industry uh, cultivates is is pretty pretty awesome especially when everyone just you know music is meant to be enjoyed so of course the people who make it usually want are, are enjoyable people most of the time I wouldn't say every time but uh, it's it was it was a great experience I met a lot of cool people in the in San Francisco a lot of cool people from LA and it's it's so abundant now especially with you know the technology that that we have now with you know SoundCloud, Spotify. You you can send a message to any person on SoundCloud without an issue. You could just be like, "Hey, I like that. Let's talk." And now now I started going into a deeper um a deeper community. That there's people on twitch.com and there are music producers and I do it sometimes too. I would open up my computer and everything. I would have this camera up and I would just be talking while I'm producing music. And then people would pop in and go like, Hey, like I made a song. Would you like to listen to it? And I'm like, yeah, why not? So then you get this dialogue with so many people and yeah, the, I think the, the biggest thing that, that I can see being beneficial is your willingness to, you know, find to, to network with others and also to, to surround yourself with the people that um, have the, the traits that you want to, to, to improve on. And it, 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 will, it will make you better in what you want to do. Yeah, and that, that idea and that concept of surrounding yourself with uh, the people that you want to become is a very big con- uh, concept. I mean, I've read it in dozens of books and all the personal growth books I've ever read. I almost always see it a uh, phrase in one way or another. Um, the one oh, the one thing I keep in mind when I'm personally networking or trying to create something is, you know, I, I want to surround myself with the five people that are closely, uh, most closely related to what I want and what I'm looking to achieve. And that, that, that's actually true because it affects like the vast majority of your personality, the way you act, the way you do things, because they're in your everyday life. And when they're in your everyday life, you're going to kind of mold yourself, you know, where as humans, we like to mold ourselves into a community and into a, a group of people that, that almost group think, which is, you know, bad in its own way, but also good. Because if you, if you're all thinking as an entrepreneur, you know, I surround myself with someone like Rio and someone like you and, uh, you know, the, the mindset is that we're all entrepreneurs and we're all trying to create um, something that is beneficial for the greater community. Um, that mindset becomes more ingrained within yourself and you become more motivated to do that, like you said. And so that concept is really big and it's universal. I mean, every book, like I said, every book I've read has that. So I completely agree with you on that. Yeah, and that's, that's why we meet as a Gen Z Journey team every day. Because we, we will have great admiration for each other and we all like Peter said, on a goal towards something very, very similar. So bringing that together and surrounding ourselves with that sort of community is, is very beneficial. And there's a saying as well that you, you are the average of, your, of the five people you surround yourself with, most the most that you most surround yourself with. So definitely uh, agree on that. And Peter, I had something for you, actually. Um, there's a philosopher, I bring him up pretty much every podcast. There's a philosopher called Alan Watts, um, and he spoke on... Um, uh, he spoke on this idea of, of life and how, you know, um, the arts and music is a, is a great way to, um, is, is a great expression of life um, because uh, if, if people go through life with kind of lots of destinations all the time, then um, it cannot be very enjoyable. 
but with music with art with all of those things it's it's not about the end goal it's all about the journey and the process of getting there otherwise you know the fastest players would be the best players because the song would be done in in 30 seconds instead of a minute um and it's all about that enjoyment of, of the of music of the emotion that it takes you through and everything like that and what it makes you feel um and and that very much protrudes to to life the more you enjoy the journey of, of what you're doing and where you're going the more actually you're going to enjoy life in general because in reality the end result and the destination of wherever you're going lasts for at most a day and at least an hour so so if you're always chasing that destination then you're not necessarily going to fulfill you know what you're trying to do so uh i think that's a that's a huge part of of what we do here as well as the you know enjoying that journey enjoying the community that we're part of and enjoying that journey together is is it's just wonderful it's an amazing experience i agree i have a, i have a question actually so i uh, coming onto the gen z journey team and being a, a newest member of the team um what are you most excited about and what do you want to accomplish in the in the upcoming months? You know, I want to see the 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 biggest thing I want to see is I want to get one of those emails, just one of those emails that from someone that goes like, "Hey, I heard about what you guys do. I've heard your podcasts, changed my life." I I just want to see someone say, "You know what? This was actually eye opening." I'm I'm glad to be you know part of something that that is as big as this, as big uh, not 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 as it doesn't even have to be big, just something that is so influential that actually show that that just sh- you know shines the light on what it means to be financially stable, to understand you know what it means w- what your purpose is in life you know just to just to guide someone into like the right mindset. That they want to be in i know a lot of people right now they're they're completely lost i i know I, i'll be honest there's not a lot of people who know exactly what they're doing it's literally a journey no one knows exactly what they want but the the more that you think about it the more that you strive into finding out what your strengths are and then finding out what you're really good at and then using those things to apply yourself into you know your you know your world i just think that i would love to see someone say hey whatever you're doing i love listening to it i love the people that you bring you know it it changed my perspective i think that would be the that would be the pinnacle for me i'll be so happy with that that's awesome and i mean we've actually already i personally have gotten two of of those messages on linkedin already so I mean, we're we're just starting up, and we I've already gotten a couple, and I'm pretty sure Rio's gotten a couple, and uh, you know, as it grows, we're gonna get more of that. So you're gonna get a lot of appreciation. So I don't think you have to be too worried about that. <laughs> but I that's think that's awesome. a, that's a love a lovely note to kind of to kind of end things with as well is the fact that that's a that's a huge motivation for us. You know, change in people's perspe- perspective and attitude towards life in general is like a huge motivation of what we do here and, and kind of the main motivation i would say um is just kind of i don't want to say revealing because i feel like it's always there for someone to take and we don't have to be the ones to, to show them that but the fact that we have the ability to to, to present it to them this is just amazing as a huge motivation of of what we do here and I believe really kind of why we're all here as part of the Gen Z journey team, you know, is is because of that that ability to be able to show people this lifestyle and and live it ourselves. You know, we wanna we wanna present that to as many people and as a big audience as possible. But uh, but yeah, that was just my my little take on it. So uh, thanks so much, Peter, for coming on. I'm sure everyone will see more of Peter as we as we uh, kind of continue with this podcast. I'm sure we'll host a couple of times. Um, but again yeah thanks peter for coming on i'll be right behind the camera guys (laughs) you'll see me (laughs) but uh without further ado we'll end as we always do cheers Cheers for now now. (laughs) 
as always, head over to the Instagram and Facebook at Gen Z Journey, where you can get an inside scoop of what's going on behind the scenes, as well as seeing the exciting guests that are coming on for that week. But above all else, thanks so much for listening. We really appreciate all your participation, and we're excited you're on this journey with us. See you next time.